Hello, welcome to another retail talk session. Today, we are very pleased to have Steve Horniak with us. Steve is the Chief Commercial Officer at Fabric. Steve, welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, can you introduce yourself to us a little bit? Uh, sure. Steve Horniak. I'm a 30-plus uh, year industry veteran in retail and retail technology. I've been uh, fortunate enough to be part of two NASDAQ-based IPOs, as well as six different startups where we've taken companies from zero to tens and hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue. I've also been involved in over $2 billion of financial raises, as well as acquisition and divestiture of, of over a dozen companies. Wonderful, wonderful to have you with us today, Steve. Okay, so we'll talk about what's going on in the retail domain with COVID and with technology. So um, I'll start with a sort of classic. We know that the consumer uh, consumption behavior is uh, based on habit, which is hard to change, but uh, COVID changed everything. Uh, it changed people's consumption habits and shopping patterns. Do you think these changes will be permanent? And how do you think post-COVID environment will be uh, for physical stores and for shoppers? Uh, absolutely. So I think that there is absolutely going to be permanent change based on COVID. If you look back historically, I think 9-11 is probably the biggest impact that had a change on um, how we lived our lives. You know, post pre-9-11 post security was radically different and people's behavior is radically different, uh, particularly as associated with getting on airplanes, getting in buildings, et cetera. So I think the same thing has, has happened with COVID. It threw us five years into the future from an e-commerce perspective but also change behaviors on how people shop. I think people are looking for more convenience, people looking for more speed, um, and people looking for more experiential events to get them out of the home and, and into shopping. So while it, it's that this peak, everything goes up in, in peaks and valleys. So we had a rapid, absolutely, the, uh, where we've settled into across the board in retail, from my perspective, is here to stay. Well, um, well, we all know that because of the pandemic, uh, we're all shopping more online. And uh, McKenzie recently published a report that says the use of things like Bopis, buy online, pick up in store, grew uh, near 30%. Uh, so how do you think new generation shopping types such as uh, Bopis, click and collect, drone distribution solution, uh, how will these affect physical retail? Absolutely. I think physical retail is here to stay. It's not going anywhere, but it's changing. I mean, if you look at it, and uh, and everything has to change relative to retail, a combination of online, offline, which is people have been talking about for a long time. I think this was really just an, a, a rapid accelerant, right? This was, five, this was gasoline on a fire and then a big fan on it, flaming it, that accelerated it. So I think a lot of the things that you're going to see is, is people buy online, pick up in store. You're going to need a retail footprint to do that or some type of micro fulfillment or facility close to the customers. And stores, in essence, are like micro fulfillment centers because they carry the product and they're close to the customers. So being able to combine uh, inventory, you're going to have to have more of a real time view of inventory. You're going to have to have um, uh, replenishment is going to have to be a lot faster, both to the stores as well as to the consumer. And you're going to have to have visibility to your products in your supply chain at a level never before seen in traditional retail when you're combining retail with click and collect or the buy online pick up and store or the click and deliver. And if you look at Instacart and others out there, um, there's, a, there's a massive demand for uh, click and have to have it now. And the most cost-effective way to do that is when your product is close to the customer. And that's where leveraging existing retail footprints, whether it be in grocery or uh, other um, you know, general merchandise stores is going to be prevalent. Well, uh, let's talk about how technology helps all these things. Uh, where does technology come in? Uh, image recognition technology, AI technology. How do you see the future in uh, all these? I, I think the, the of paramount importance are really three things when you're looking at it. So people have, you've got to be able to keep your costs down. You've got to be able to have the product that people want when they want it. And you're going to have to have uh, to draw people into your store from a different type of shopping or experience situation. So those are the three things. So keeping your prices down, that's where any type of automation is required, whether it's robotics for picking, whether it's artificial intelligence, 
um, or image recognition for being able to tell what is on the shelf or, or uh, being able to do cashierless checkout. Those are the three that kind of jump out um, at it. You got to have the product that they want when they want it. Otherwise, they're going to go online. So inventory and knowing what is on your shelf, not just what you think is on your shelf or what might be somewhere in your supply chain, but knowing real time what is on your shelf will be another important factor in keeping, maintaining um, uh, really successful and satisfied customers. And the experiential, there's going to have to be another draw as to why people will want to go in store as the click and collect gets closer to real time within hours instead of days. Uh, there's going to have to be more of a reason to pull and draw people into your stores. So um, what do you think about digitized physical shelves combining online and in-store channels for driving sales growth? Will it you improve know, the sales? I, I, yeah, absolutely. I, I think the whole digi digitization of the stores is something that people have wanted to do over the years, but the technology hasn't quite been there until recently. And now with advanced technologies, better edge-based processing um, and improvements in image recognition, particularly as it comes to real-time or near real-time image recognition, whether it be for on-shelf availability, whether it be for out of stock, whether it be for trade promotion and compliance, or also blending into cashierless checkout, the deployment of that, um, this, this kind of artificial intelligence and and uh, combining digital with physical will absolutely be paramount, particularly for your fast moving consumer goods. I think that that's where you're gonna see the bulk of it initially, but ultimately, you know, any goods that can be determined and, and defined and recognized, uh, there's going to be eyes in the sky and cameras all over the place and all these stores that help increase uh, the customer experience in physical environments and increase efficiency and drive down costs for the retailers. Well, for online shopping, for many years, we've been seeing that customer behavior is analyzed very extensively. Uh, you know, what customers look at, uh, how long they look at it, uh, what they buy, what they don't buy. Uh, what do you think about for physical uh, stores? Can this kind of data be collected and what can we done with these data in physical stores? Yeah, absolutely. Um, consumer, consumer sentiment behavior has been you know, a topic of discussion over the last decade, if not longer, in stores. And one of the main issues uh, around that has just been the absolute cost of deployment, which results in a more extended return on investment, again, with advances in technology, with decreasing exponential, decreasing costs in hardware, and decreasing costs of processing, as well as increasing capabilities of artificial intelligence, we're now starting to see those curves kind of overlap where it'll, it really starts to make sense to deploy these types of technologies. Again, whether it be for uh, consumer behavior analytics, uh, but actually more importantly for shelf-based analytics to make sure that you actually have, um, you know, I'll, I'll call it the perfect shelf. You know, a lot of people have heard to, if you talk to the CPGs out there again, talking about fast moving consumer goods, they all know that if you have, if the shelf looks like this, they will sell more stuff. So everyone is uh, is in search of maintaining that perfect self shelf situation, which requires constant um, uh, constant review, which you can you can only do uh, cost effectively, leveraging artificial intelligence and computer vision. Well, uh, we talked about retailers, but let's uh, move to a little bit to CPGs. Uh, we know that brands are innovating in many ways to improve conversion and create memorable experience to keep customers uh, coming back for more. And what could they do? What could CPGs do to create new ways to maximize shopper engagement and deliver you know, wow uh, moments? So I, I think a lot of it, you're looking at the, you know, the battle of the trade promotion. You know, if you got, you've got limited trade promotion dollars out there today that the CPGs have, and they're looking and saying, how do I spread this among my digital and my physical to get the, the optimal blend of, uh, of engagement with customers which drive my sales. So now for the first time, we're, you know, with deployment of uh, machine learning and camera-based image recognition technology in the storage, you can gather the data to the same level that you have data online and therefore optimize the dollars spent. Uh, one of the biggest things that's happening in stores today is non-compliance to trade promotion. 
So you're, I'm supposed to have this promotion. I'm supposed to have this stand. I'm supposed to have this end cap. I'm supposed to have this share of shop. I'm supposed to have this special pricing. But for whatever reason, it's not being complied with down at the store level. So I'm spending money doing this program, but it's not being complied with. Online, you can see it right away, right? It's there, it's, it's digital. But in the stores, if you had uh, computer vision and image recognition based technology, you could confirm that all of your trade promotion dollars are being complied with in execution out in the field. So that is, I think, a, a big driver for compliance with what they know should work. And then once it's complied with, they can then measure it and then see what works best. But if it's not being complied with, you're measuring what's not being complied with, you're getting a double negative. Uh, how does technology help? You know, what should they, CPGs, prioritize and what should they invest in to get these benefits? Sure. So I think it's a combination of, of automation and removal of labor. I think those are the big thing. And then, and then there would be the third, you know, if you can't tell, I like three. So the third one is being able to leverage more uh, access to data more frequently, right? So um, automation, everyone, you know, hears about robotics and the automation of robotics for picking, et cetera. And that solves some of the problem, but retailers do need to look at that, whether they insource it or outsource it to a 3PL, third party logistics provider. Um, reduction of labor. You know, labor is a huge component of source, particularly grocery stores and CPGs, massive component of what their overall operating costs are. So uh, it, removing and mitigating labor as much as possible through automation and through the use of camera-based technology, machine learning out in the field, and even just pulling out fractions of fractions of labor components um, can have a massive impact on, on, these, uh, on, on their bottom line. So really looking at how can I drive more revenue through trade compliance, drive more revenue through having the right product on the right shelf at the right point in time, and then drive my, my labor costs down so just increasing that gross margin gap between getting a little bit of uptake on the top line and getting a little bit of downtake on the bottom line times a lot of stores and a lot of revenue is really what uh, mainly this, you know, I'll, I'll call the CPG basic consumer based uh, retailers um, are focusing on and should be focused on. How about for retailers? What should they invest in? Uh, is it, could it be digital acceleration, supply chain resilience, transition to online? What should their priorities be, you think? You know, it, it, same thing. I mean, I mean, if you talk to retailers, you're really interested in two things, increase my revenue and decrease my costs. So, you know, increasing of the revenue, obviously, through access to customers, uh, through better e-commerce platforms. And it's going to be e-commerce platforms that they build themselves in a direct-to-consumer mode. And it's also going to be through aggregators out there, like Instacart, Amazon, and others, right? So Instacart is the new generation aggregator for the uh, the on-demand order fulfillment, just like Amazon became the online aggregator for multi-day and ultimately same day. But you need to also take control and go direct to consumer yourself in the e-commerce world for uh, for retailers. Um, combine that with, and there's, there's tons of applications for in-store, I'll call it automation of manual tasks for all retailers uh, through the use of, of camera-based and machine learning technology you're going to see a lot more deployment of cashierless tech, you know, where people, you, there's going to be a no touch. So you come in, you pick up what you want and you leave and it knows who you are and it knows what you purchased. So I think you're going to see over the next five year, massive move to that as well as a massive move towards leveraging um, cameras in store in order to help merchandise and facilitate whether CPG or general retailers. Well, Steve, thanks a lot for all your answers. It's been really wonderful. Is there any message, the last message you would like to give to our audience? Um, absolutely. Don't become Blockbuster. <laughs> so Blockbuster looked out there and said, what is this digital wave? We don't believe in it. Um, yeah, everyone knows Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix and they just said that's kind of sort of stupid. So, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I tell people all the time, just don't blockbuster. It's a verb. Don't block me. Don't be, it said, don't be blockbuster. Don't blockbuster. Well, so make sure you, you know, you constantly look at changing. Um, and, uh, and, and now is the time to do it. It's, it's accelerated things. You know, we've had a radical change in this world because of the COVID accelerant. Um, so make sure that we, as retailers, whether it be CPG or general merchandise, um, we, we accept that change 
and we're going to have to invest. So you're going to have to spend money in order to make money. So doing the doing the as is is going to absolutely result in a blockbuster event. Wonderful. Thank you a lot, Steve. You're very welcome. Have a great day. You too.